The reason it's so important to know how a parametric EQ works is you find it on a lot of mixing consoles these days. and many, In many cases, you only have the frequency and the gain control. Uh, more expensive consoles will give you that Q or bandwidth control also. It's very important to know how that works as most of our sound lives in the mid-range. A lot of people tend to say, oh, I need more high-end, and they're turning that high-end high knob up, not realizing that that's the extreme high-end part of the sound. What they really want to grab is somewhere in the middle. A lot of people think that right in here is high-end, because when that squeals very loudly, you're going to hear that, and it's going to sound really high. So the, the bass part of our sound in pretty much any instrument, our timbre, or voice, really lives in the mid-range. It's very important, therefore, to have some good control over mid-range, and that's why parametric EQs came to be. So the main difference in a parametric and graphic EQ is the graphic gives you some choices of frequencies to move up and down, which you generally just do up and down. So when I grab this, I'm changing the frequency of 250 hertz, either being able to boost it or cut it, depending on where I put the knob. A lot of people understand that. That's pretty common sense. What makes a parametric EQ a little bit more complex is we have to select the frequency of 250 hertz. On a parametric EQ, if I want to adjust 250 hertz, I first have to find the knob or slider, in this case it's a knob, that has frequencies written on it, and I have to move that knob to 250 hertz. The next thing I have to do is find the volume or gain or cut button for that parametric band and turn it up or down. It's no different than going across, selecting our frequency, and then moving it up or down. Another knob that you might find on a parametric EQ is a bandwidth control, or Q. Um, on this particular product, it says narrow to wide. And what this actually does is, let's again go back to our 250 hertz frequency. If we have a narrow bandwidth, we're going to close right in on that frequency. As we turn that knob to the wide setting, we're basically going to open that up. And what that may take us to is maybe all the way down to 50 hertz on the low end, all the way up to, say, maybe 500 on the high end. What this allows us to do is to use that parametric EQ to control wide areas of the sound spectrum or very tight problem areas so that you could possibly boost what it takes to cut your uh, instrument or voice through the mix or possibly take a problem frequency out. On this particular product, the ProBase 500, we have three parametric EQs. It's something that you find pretty much on, on a lot of high-end bass products. Uh, bass players tend to be pretty good at parametric EQ. There's even some active basses that have a parametric control on the bass. Let's demonstrate uh, the mid-range control just for a second here. On the Pro 500, there are three bands of mid. We'll just deal with this, the center one because I think we'll be able to hear that the best. Um, first thing I'm going to do is actually go ahead and crank that mid-range volume all the way up so I can really hear what I'm going to do. I'm also going to take our um, Q and crank that to the narrow bandwidth so we can really hear what this is going to do. I'm just going to play a straight A note drone and move this frequency knob. Now as you can see there's lots of tonal colors there. It kind of sounds like a Wawa. That's typically all a Wawa actually does. What we're going to do is maybe find a frequency here that I think is maybe boxy and let's take that out by cutting the volume. Okay, let's play with that for just another second. I'm going to turn that back up and just find something that's a little snappier and maybe pulls the sound out a little bit. I'm going to start back at zero and just give it a tiny bit. quick example of what that does. If I take that same bandwidth, same setting, and open the bandwidth up to a wider setting, this is a little bit more subtle to hear. But you can hear it getting a little bit rounder, and that's probably because we're controlling some frequencies that are lower, and on a bass guitar you can really hear that. And to give a quick demonstration of the bandwidth knob, let's do the exact same thing. Let's turn this mid frequency all the way up. This time we're going to pull the bandwidth knob over to the wide section and just listen to this. I guess I should go back to the A string so it's a fair example. We don't hear quite as much happening and that's because we're controlling a, a wider area. It's not so narrow. It still sounds like a wah-wah but a very soft wah. 
what we can use this for is just basic. Let's say you just say, I need more thump in my bass sound. Well, we may pull that all the way wide. We'll pull it back down here. Okay, that's what we can use that for.